gardening in February is really depending on the weather that you'll end up getting. I know we're all really eager to get out to sow and plant, but if you're in the middle of cold spells and frosts, there's really is very little you can do in the garden then. But uh, if you're lucky, and I suppose if you get a bit of a milder weather, uh, there are plenty of jobs to get on with. No, I am surrounded by green countryside and the garden is absolutely filled with birdsong. But the feeders are empty and even though it's green at the moment, that doesn't mean that we won't still get cold spells. And the temperatures during the night are still dropping down to near the freezing point. So let's help the little feather friends out and keep still feeding them and topping up their feeders. Um, there's plenty of water so I don't have to worry about water but it's the food that while they're protecting their nesting sites the food is there even if it is just for the early mornings um, to get their energy up and get them to warm themselves up but um, yeah pe peanuts and birdseed Another job I'd like to get on with between months of sort of January and February is pruning the butterfly bush or the buddleia. And this is one plant I would not do without in our garden. This plant's ability sort of to draw the butterflies to itself is impressive to say the least. But on the second half of summer, this is going to be covered by bees and butterflies. It is the most wonderful plant to be about because you'll have all these butterflies surrounding you. So usually what I do, I would cut it down right down to the base. But now this year, once I'm developing this cottage garden and I'm thinking I might like this to keep growing taller, I'm only going to be taking off about a third of it rather than all the way down to the ground. If you have fruit bushes and you're like me that you didn't get them cut back in autumn then now is the time to do that as well. Now the trick with fruit bushes to keep them fruiting as productively as possible is to keep a really good air circulation in the centre of the plant itself. So that's why it's referred to as a goblet shape. So the centre is emptier, the sun can reach it, um, the the air can reach the center of the plant as, as well as possible. But there's also a balance between old branches and young branches coming in. So every year you sort of would want to be removing a third of the oldest branches and you can easily see it by the color of the branch because the old branches are the darkest. Of and that just keeps a nice rotation of the branch work of the youngest shoots that were only grown the last season. Uh, two-year-old shoots and let's say three or four-year-old shoots. And if you want to multiply your plants, those cuttings that you're taking out of those new shoots or those younger shoots are perfect, stuck into a compost and they will fruit really easily.
and it's also time to prune apple and pear trees but not the cherries and not plums And the same thing what I just done to the currant bushes is going to happen to the gooseberries as well. But another really easy way of propagating likes of gooseberries would be that last year I placed a couple of their lower branches to touch the ground or the surface level here in the planter and exactly where it has touched the ground or it was buried under the soil slightly it has sent out new roots so now all i have to do is cut the branch back closest to its parent plant and i have a whole new baby gooseberry plant So propagating currant bushes and gooseberries, really, really easy. So I took cuttings from my red currants. Um, I have plenty, I think, of the black currants at the moment. And then obviously my favorite gooseberry as well. So out of one branch that was laid uh, across the soil, there was actually three separate uh, cuttings I could get out of that one branch, plus those extra branches that I had as well. So definitely do try that. So easy to get free plants for yourself. Now, if you haven't washed your greenhouse glass or pollets on it yet, now is definitely the last time to get that done because you want to be well prepped before all the seedlings are in there because they will only benefit having clean environment and to make sure that there's no algae blocking the light reaching them. Now I got mine washed probably in October, November, but that was because I was changing the layout around and I had no plants growing in there anymore. But there's definitely nothing better than starting spring with a clean environment, clean surrounding and clean work surfaces, really ready for the season ahead. Now, if you're growing ornamental plants like I do, or even if you have just a few areas or borders of non-edibles, and especially if they have spring flowering plants in them, now is definitely the time to clean them up, weed them and mulch them. Because this is really the only time of the year you really want to showcase those spring flowering bulbs or plants or flowers and having a clean area around them is going to show them off really the best to their ability. And that is especially true if you grow hellebores and you haven't removed the last season's foliage like I haven't and they're just in the planter there and I see disease on those leaves so they have to be removed ASAP. I do have to clean my secatures after and I'm going to dispose of those leaves. I'm not going to add them to the compost heap because I don't want any hellebore diseases to spread because they can be detrimental to the plant itself.
Now, if the ground is not frozen, month of February is a really good time also to move or relocate uh, perennial plants. So, for instance, I would have had the big seed fennel in the fruit tree that I wanted to move because it just had grown way too big for that uh, space. It was even bigger than the apple tree itself. And then I also had a thornless blackberry that was just coming too much in onto the walkway part of it. because doing it now before the plant has started to put all its energy into new shoots, new growth, and then you go around and chop the roots back because you're going to dig it out. Um, it's going to save the plant. Um, wasting too much energy. And then it's also going to settle in a new location much easier for you. Most of the seed potatoes selections are going to be available now, either if you directly order them and pre-order them usually month of February is when you get your delivery and even in the garden centers now is the time when you have the biggest selection out there and I do like to chit my seed potatoes so it is not strictly necessary but I do like to do that in the month of February and I also do the same with oka so I place them on egg cartons they can just be cardboard boxes as well and I place them on the north facing side of our sort of utility boot room, windowsill and then the surrounding area where they get really bright light but it's indirect so the sun is never going to be shining on them. And they're going to just be left there until we're ready to uh, plant them. So all the first early, second earlies and main crop all together. So I have them there in front of me. I can observe them, just make sure they're all healthy and there's good strong shoots uh, growing out of them. There's no real stress or pressure with any of these jobs, except perhaps pruning the fruit trees like apple trees and pear trees. But otherwise, yeah. A lot of these jobs could be even put off until early March. It really, as I say, is going to be weather dependent. <laughs>